Hello everyone, we are doing module 9 on interconnection networks. This is lecture number 2 where we are going to discuss the different network topologies. So interconnect topologies as we uh, know is now the physical connectivity of the network where uh, or which tells how the nodes are connected to each other via switches or directly and so on. Okay, and why do we need to understand this? Because when a packet is sent from a source to a destination, it has to go through this network. Okay, so the physical connectivity matters there because that is going to decide how many paths are available and uh, what is the bandwidth of every path, how much latency does a packet take to reach from one node to the other. When there are contentions in the network that is multiple packets are flowing through it, then if I have multiple paths available then it is going to help the transfer of data and reduce the stall time. So the topology helps even to reduce the contention and improve the latency. So therefore topology plays a very critical role in the performance of a parallel architecture system. So we want to reduce the contention or the impact of contention and at the same time the network should remain connected. So we want a very connectivity to be maintained, multiple paths to be available in case of heavy traffic. At the same time latency of every packet should be as small as possible. So to do this it all depends on the way the nodes and the switches are connected. So therefore this network topology which is the method of connection plays a crucial role in the performance of the system as such. So these topologies come in two flavors one is a direct and one is indirect. So indirect networks can be viewed as a box with ports. So every node is not connected directly to the other node, it goes via a switch or via another box. And direct networks are where the nodes are tightly integrated with each other or with the switches. So when I have tight integration, it is called a direct. When I go via some box or some switch, it is called an indirect networks. What are the different properties of topology or any network when I design, what should I uh, take care of? I have to bother about scaling, that is if I keep adding number of nodes, is the topology scalable? Then other things like what is the average distance, what is the degree and so on. So many parameters have to be considered when we uh, have to derive what type of a topology fits best for a given design or a given architecture. So interconnect topology is broadly divided into two types, indirect and direct. In the indirect networks, we have bus, crossbar, a multidimensional array. Until under multidimensional, we have trees, butterfly and uh, more variants of multidimensional networks. In the direct uh, networks, we have linear arrays, rings, mesh, torus, hypercubes and several more. As um, I already told you, this is a vast topic. Every design can be seen more into depth, understood more about it. But as part of a course on parallel architecture, we just want to get a feel of how the network functions. And hence, we are going to see some aspects of these designs. And not all designs will be covered. We are going to see bus crossbar and multidimensional arrays and some of the direct networks. So we'll start with the indirect networks because we are already familiar with a bus type of a network, right? So a bus is the first type of an indirect network. We all understand how a bus is made up of. We have processor nodes, uh, cache modules, memory modules, some IO modules connected to a single bus. So this bus is an interconnect. It is called an indirect interconnect because now every module has to talk with another module via the bus. So when I connect different modules to a bus and I want to communicate what is my requirement, first thing we have to arbitrate for the bus that is go and uh, ask permission to use the bus. Only one of the requesters will get the permission, others will have to wait. Once you get this permission, you can transfer the data after the work is complete, release the bus. Right? So this is one communication at a time. As you can see, this is going to be slow. You cannot do parallel communication here because it is a shared medium. Okay, And uh, if you want to establish fairness, that is any module should be at eventually be able to transfer data, your bus arbitration logic should guarantee fairness, avoid starvation and so on. Okay, So bus being a shared medium, it has some limitations, but it is good enough for small number of nodes. 
So it's a shared medium and every time a node has to get an exclusive access to this medium for sending the data. We have to guarantee fairness among computing resources or uh, computing requesters because otherwise uh, certain nodes will never be able to uh, establish communication. Okay, so with that design, what are the different observations related to the properties of this network? Is this network scalable? So the more number of nodes I add, it is going to result into several limitations because the number of transactions to be processed will increase at the same time the length of the wire. So this, this bus width. So this wire will increase, I have to increase the length of this if I am adding more and more nodes. If you increase the length of the wire, what happens? The capacitive load on these wires increases and that impacts the latency. So length increases, capacitive load increases and hence your latency of transfer increases. When latency increases at the same time you would get a reduced bandwidth uh, and hence we can say that a bus network is not scalable. Well it is not scalable but uh, do you think it is useless? No it is not. So this is good for if you have small number of nodes. So this is a good type of an interconnect if you want to connect small number of nodes. What is the diameter of this network? If you recollect diameter was the maximum shortest path. So diameter here is 1 because no matter which node is communicating to which one um, depending on their physical location, it does not matter, it is just going to take uh, one hop from any node to any other node, hence the diameter is equal to 1. Degree is the maximum links connected to a switch. So here every node is connected to every other node. So if there are n nodes, I can say that I have connectivity for all the n nodes, hence the degree is equal to n. What is the cost of this network? That is if I uh, add more and more nodes, is it going to be a constant cost or will the cost increase with the number of nodes? So you will say yes it will increase because I have to increase the length of the wire, I have to establish connection of a, a new node has to be connected here and accordingly everything has to be updated. Hence the cost of a bus is order n that is it depends on the number of nodes. So it grows linearly with the number of nodes added. What is the bandwidth? Bandwidth is order 1 and actually worse than this because uh, other factors come into play. So here the bandwidth is not so good because it is almost constant. So even if my n is very large, I am not getting bandwidth which is proportional to the number of nodes. My bandwidth is always going to be constant. Hence, if the n is small, your cost is less and you will be able to perform good. Therefore, a bus is good for small number of nodes. All right. Next type of uh, interconnect is the crossbar. So we are going to use the same concept of a bus because it was good for small number of nodes but now I will use several of this. So I can extend this idea and say that I have say 4 buses in the vertical direction and I have 4 buses in the horizontal direction or a bundle of wires. So I can have these and the intersection here, So this is right now open so I can establish a switch between this something like this and if I connect these two wires, I will be able to establish a connection from this horizontal to this vertical path. Okay? So by programmatically fusing this node, we can establish a path from this to this. So what am I connecting to these? Here I am going to connect some nodes and here some other nodes. So sources and destinations could be distributed like this and if this is the source, it can transfer data to this destination by uh, programming this particular switch. All these uh, points which we are discussing are called cross points because they connect the horizontal bus with the vertical bus. At a given point of time, how many connections are possible? In the case of bus, I can only send if this is the source and that is the destination S1, D1 they can communicate. When S1 and D1 is communicating, S2 and D2 cannot communicate because the bus will be reserved for S1 and D1. How about the same scenario in the crossbar? So crossbar if I have this as S1, D1 and I have this as S2, D2, okay. So I can definitely establish connection between S1, D1 and S2, D2, right. So S1, D1 can use this path and S2, D2 can use this path. 
so I can have two parallel connections. So how many such parallel connections are possible when you are using a crossbar? So if I have n nodes here and n nodes there, I can uh, have n pairs of parallel paths possible. So here I have four, so I can have four parallel paths established between the four senders and the four receivers given that the pairs are distinct. Okay. If S2 wants to send to D1, then you can't establish this. As long as the pairs are distinct, you can establish point to point connections. Okay. So again, this is good for small number of networks. It gives you uh, low latency and good throughput. Right. So you will have source and destinations connected this way. This is the cross point. So if you program this cross point, you can establish a connection from one node to the other node. So in this, uh, if you want to add more nodes, so from the point of view of scalability, what will happen, right? So I have four nodes here. I want to add a fifth one, probably another fifth one here. Then what changes? You will have to extend this grid, right? So you will have to increase the length of these vertical buses. You will have to add one more horizontal bus and these cross points. So overall, just adding one node has ended up expanding the network by a large amount, right? So even I need to extend it here if I want to connect this node. Okay, so you can pause the video and calculate how much this is, right? So Although we can establish connections up to order n, that is n distinct pairs can communicate with each other. When I add newer nodes, what happens? The number of cross points increases quadratically. So if you come back here, I have added one more node. So I ended up adding four and how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more points. So every time uh, I need to increase this grid quadratically because you have to add nodes in the number of uh, rows and columns, everything has to increase. So your grid increases in quadratically. So your cross points increase uh, order of n square. Okay. So just adding a node is going to increase your cost by square. Where am I going to use this? This is uh, used in some of the uh, implementations for core to cash bank networks. So it has been um, used very popularly. What are the different uh, values of the parameters? What is the diameter? That is the maximum shortest path. What is the diameter? That is communication from one node to another. So if this one wants to send to any other node, as long as I program the cross point correctly, it is just going to take one path, right? So the diameter of the network is equal to one. What is the degree? That is the maximum links connected to a switch. The degree is n. And to conclude, the cost is order n square. This cost was cheaper in the bus, it was order n. Whereas in cross path, the cost is order n square. But it gives us better bandwidth because I can establish connections uh, in parallel if the source and destinations are distinct. So the bandwidth here is order n, whereas the bandwidth of the bus was order 1. Okay, so that was crossbar. Now if you want to scale it further, that is um, the drawback of crossbar was the scalability was an issue. It grew quadratically, uh, so it was uh, order n square. So can I do better? So for this, we can uh, design networks which are more modular. So instead of having one big crossbar where I am going to quadratically increase the size of the grid, I will say that let me use small crossbars and connect multiple of this in layers. So multiple crossbars connected as stages. So that's why it is called a multi-stage network. So how do you do this? So first you will have set of nodes. Instead of all the nodes connecting through a crossbar grid to other nodes, I am going to connect it to intermediate nodes which are called small crossbar or stages, right? So here, if I have these nodes, in a crossbar, what did we do? We took the nodes on the left and at the bottom and then we constructed this grid which look uh, made up of these blue circles. So instead of that, I am going to say that put some switches here which are nothing but crossbars, right? So these are again crossbars and now these nodes will connect to these switches. These will connect here 
and then eventually they will connect to the other side nodes. So I will have multiple stages connecting from one set of nodes to the other set of nodes. The building blocks for this is small crossbars. So we look at an example where I will use eight nodes connecting to eight other nodes. Use eight nodes, one, two, so these eight nodes on the left will be connected to eight nodes on the right. Each of these nodes go through a, a crossbar in the middle and these two connect here in some order. So we are going to uh, decide how do I establish a connection. So here if I connect these two pairwise to this, eventually I will have eight nodes talking to eight other nodes. So node 0, so this is node 0 and this is node 7. So node 0 to node 7 on the left should be able to communicate with, so for these I will put them in green color, node 0 to node 7 on the right, right. So these are the green nodes and those are the red nodes. I want to design the middle part that is the stages in such a way that all the red color nodes should be connected to the green color nodes. That is N0 should be able to connect with every N0 to N7 in the green color. So what is the magic or what is the connection which I should do with these stages so that I can establish this property. Right now the way I have designed the N0 is connected to one box and how that first box connects to the second box and to the network will decide whether N0 will be able to talk with only N0 or all of the N0 to N7 on the right hand side. Okay, so the thing to be kept in mind while designing is that these number of stages and the connections you make to the stage should be such that every node on one side should be able to communicate to every node on the other side. Okay, so that's the requirement for a multi-stage network. There are many designs existing. One of them is called a perfect shuffle method. So in the perfect shuffle method, if you can imagine a deck of cards, when you want to do a perfect shuffle, what do you do? You take the deck of cards, you make two parts of it and then you make a perfect shuffle. That is you take one card from one uh, partition and another from another one and then you construct the final deck. So interleaving, fine interleaving from one deck to the other will create a perfect shuffle. So we are going to look at the perfect shuffle way of doing this. Okay. So to understand this idea of how we can uh, generate connections in this portion so that every node should be able to connect to every other node. So with that we will see as an example here where you have 8 nodes on this side and they should be able to communicate with each other. So we take the first node connected to this, this is a 2 cross 2 cross bar and the way it is designed is every box connects 2 links. So one link goes to this box and the second link goes to the second box. Right? So if I say this is box 1, 2, 3 and 4, the box number 1 connects to 1 and 2, the box number 2 connects to 3 and 4. So if I take the first box, it connects to the first box here and the second link connects to the second box. When I take the second box, the second box here in the first stage connects to the third because we have already connected to the second box. right? So we have connected here, we have connected here. Now box number 2 connects to box 3 and 4. Through this, this is box 3 and box 4. Okay, So we have connected them. Now when I go to box number 3, box number 3, there is no box after 4, so you go back and connect with 1. So once you have finished 1 and 2, for connecting box 3 in the first stage, we have exhausted 1, 2, 3, 4, so this again goes to 1 and then the second link goes to 2. When you take box number 4, it goes to 3 and 4, right? So box number 4 connects to 3 and 4. So this way, the links from the first stage are connected to the links in the uh, second stage. The same idea is followed. So this is stage 1, this is stage 2 and this is stage 3. So you have 3 stages everywhere the same idea is followed. So with this, this is called the omega network. If I do such connections, I guarantee that all nodes on the left will be able to communicate with all nodes on the right. So you can quickly see an example just to verify whether this works. Let us take this node and if it wants to communicate with any other node. So first it will go here because this is the only 
path for this node to go out, right? It is not connected uh, to 1 or 2, it is connected to this uh, box number 3. Now, from box number 3, it has got two paths, either it can go to 1, it can go here or it can go here. Now, it will decide this. Here is where the routing algorithm will come into picture, where it will tell that a packet coming from uh, circle number 3, when it comes to green box number 3, should it go to green box 1 or 2 in the stage 2, right. So, the routing algorithm will decide this, but uh, let us do it manually that if I want to go here, then what should I follow? Okay, you can pause the video and try to solve it yourself. So, I am at box 3 in stage 1. From there, if I take a path to this place and from there I go to this switch and from there I can go to this switch. Okay, so this way I am able to establish a path from uh, node number 3 from left to node number 7 on the right. And you can try out variety of options. Uh, it is guaranteed that any node from here will be able to communicate to any node on the right hand side. Okay. So, what is the mathematical property for this? How many green boxes do I need? So, overall I am going to need log n number of stages that is if I have n plus n nodes, right. I have n nodes on the left, n nodes on the right and I am going to need uh, log n number of crossbar switches. So, if I have 8 nodes in my particular example, 8 on one side, so I take log of 8 and so if I have these 3 switches plus every box should be able to connect to 2 nodes, right. So, this one is connecting to this and this circle. So, 2 nodes are connecting to every crossbar, hence I have to multiply this by n by 2 because every box will cater to 2 nodes. So, n nodes on the left divide by 2. So, these many will now connect to log n uh, number of crossbars. So, total switches which I will need is n by 2 into log n given that the degree is 2. If the degree is k then you would have to take log n to the base k. Okay. So, if I have a crossbar with degree 2 then we need n by 2 into log n to the base 2 number of crossbar switches. In general for degree k crossbar, degree k crossbar is I have, say this is degree 4, 4 coming in, 4 going out. So, there you will need log of n by k to the base k number of switches. So, here it was, this was I had total 16, so log of, so this was log 16 by 2. Alright, so in a multi-stage network with uh, crossbar of uh, degree 2, we would need n by 2 uh, log of n to the base 2 number of switches. In general, if I have a degree k, then uh, for n nodes, I have n by k into log of uh, n to the base k number of switches. Okay, so overall, uh, the cost is n times log n. The number of switches a packet has to travel from source to destination is log n to the base k for a generic network. If you go to this example, when a packet moved from left to right, how many switches did it have to move through? Actually log n. Mm. So, the number of switches it has to pass through is order log n. And there are variety of examples, the one which we saw was the Omega network, there are other networks, so the interested uh, audience can look up literature to understand how these networks work, okay. Then the third example is a tree, so tree is a planar hierarchical topology, so binary tree is familiar to all of us, so binary tree has got looks like this. And if I say I have a k array tree, then the k array tree connects uh, n nodes. So, every uh, intermediate node will have k children. Here I have uh, every node has got two children, so it is a binary tree. And what is the depth of uh, any tree? Depth of binary tree is log n and depth of a k array tree is log of n to the base k. And why is this important? Because um, the depth will decide the uh, latency or the path length of a packet because in worst case I will have to go all the way from one leaf node to the root and then back from the root to the leaf node. So, worst case I have to go log n up and then come log n down. 
in best cases uh, my common ancestor could be just here so if this is a common ancestor I just have to take this path but in the worst case I might have to go all the way up to the root okay then what is the bisection width bisection width is how many links do I remove so that I can partition this into two equal parts so as we already saw this is the single link which is closer to the root node and if I remove a link connecting the root node uh, it is going to divide the network into two pieces and definitely this link is going to be also a bottleneck uh, because if lot of traffic has to pass through uh, there will be contention at the root. How do I solve this problem of bottleneck? We could say that well can uh, we have more paths from uh, nodes closer to the root. Right. So, can I give one red color road, one green color, can I have uh, multiple paths connecting this. So, as we go up in the tree, if I increase the number of channels or the number of links, then it will reduce the contention. So, this concept is called a fat tree. So, the tree becomes fat closer to the root. Okay. So, this is how a fat tree would look like. So, if I have a link which is closer to the root it is thicker. So, thicker links means uh, multiple links are connected for the two nodes. And why do we want to do this? Because the dominant traffic if it follows or passes through the root there will be contention causing uh, performance issues. Hence, we go from a normal tree uh, topology to a fat tree topology. Communication here is uh, fairly simple. You have to go from one node to the other and it is guaranteed that you can communicate across all the nodes. If I want to go from 1 to 2, we go like this. If I want to go here from this node, then we go up, up to a common ancestor. So, what is the common ancestor? In this case, the root happens to be a common ancestor. So, you have to come this way. So, you have to travel up, up to a common ancestor and then come down. So, given this, what is the uh, diameter of the network that is what is the maximum shortest path you need to follow? So, you have to go up log n in a binary tree and go up log n, come down log n. So, 2 into log n. So, that is the diameter. Degree in a binary tree is 3 because every node is connected to two children and it itself is connected to its parent. So, degree in a binary tree is 3. The Structure is very cheap because it is order n, so it grows linearly with the number of nodes. Latency, as we saw the diameter is 2 times log n, so latency is order log n. But here the bisection width is poor because it is just one, the edge which connects to the root node uh, defines the bisection width. So therefore, this uh, is one bottleneck with the tree uh, networks. However, it is easy to lay out and to solve the bottleneck issue, we could uh, go for fat trees. And uh, if you look at butterfly networks, which are multi-stage networks, they have uh, trees embedded inside them. Like the omega network had crossbars, so butterfly network has some variant of trees embedded within them. Okay, so we looked at indirect networks. The next uh, set of networks is direct networks. So what is a direct network here? nodes of one type connect to the nodes of the same type whereas indirect network is used when I want to connect devices of one type uh, to devices of some other type. For example, I want to connect processors to memory modules, processors to caches, then I want to use indirect networks. Whereas if I want to connect processor modules which are uh, one integrated set of a processing node with another integrated set of a processing node, then I want a tight integration between them to form a direct network. And why I want this? Because the tight integration between these two nodes will help a faster communication. If I make an application localized to a set of nodes, they can communicate with each other quickly instead of going via different switches and following a longer path. So, a tight integration of the network for localized nodes will help a application to run faster. So, information exchange can happen quickly, right? So, depending on the type of application, you could choose different type of networks and hence direct networks are suited for uh, multi-threaded or multi-programmed applications which can be mapped to close by nodes. 
okay so indirect networks as we saw they were connecting devices of one type to devices of another type and there we saw that bus was one of them then we looked at multi stage networks the disadvantage of in indirect networks was that it was taking longer hops to travel so you have to go through some switches to reach your destination whereas if you want to improve on this we could localize the traffic but that's possible only in a direct network so i would uh, go for direct networks if i want to connect devices of the same type like uh, processing nodes connected to other processing nodes here if there is a frequent communication uh, between the nodes and the application is allocated in close by processing nodes then it will take advantage of a direct network so what are the different types of direct networks the first one is the simplest one called linear array as you can see here linear array is nothing but i have uh, processing nodes or switches or some nodes connected to each other so they are uh, one node is connected to the other second is connected to the third one and so on in a linear array if i want to send a message from this node to this node right so sending this message it you can't send it directly you have to go via the node sitting in the middle but if close by nodes want to communicate with each other they can do it quickly so that's the whole idea of having direct networks close by communication can happen in a efficient manner how many parallel messages can be sent in this you can say that yes every pair can talk with each other so these can talk then this can talk then this can talk right so messages can be sent between consecutive pairs of uh nodes parallelly hence i can have n minus 1 messages uh, possible at a given point of time for n number of nodes if i am sending a message from one end to the other end the maximum hops i need to cross is n minus 1 because i have to go through all the intermediate nodes so that's the worst case um, distance traveled what is the bisection width bisection width is how many links i need to break to divide this network into two parts you can say yeah well it is just one right so it is very poor because if i remove any one link my network will break into two partitions how can i improve this a little you can say that well can i connect the first node with the last node uh, forming a ring right so i could do this connect the first node with the last node if we do this then what advantage do we get what changes for the bisection width now just removing one link is not going to break the network i will have to remove two links to break the network okay hence the bisection width has doubled which is a good point right so this is a good point of a ring and what happens to the network diameter that is the worst case a uh, distance which we need to travel it was n minus 1 earlier now if i take uh, if i want to go from here to here instead of passing through all the nodes i could take the direct link hence the diameter becomes half so the diameter reduces to reduce the network diameter and increase the bisection bandwidth we have to wrap around or uh, establish a link from the last node to the first node right so what is the cost of this network it grows order n and the latency is also order n it is uh, implemented or used in few of these processes okay so the next type of a direct network is mesh centralized so we look at a mesh so mesh is nothing but a grid structure an n cross n grid and here these circles are nodes so these circles are nodes which are uh, laid out in a n cross n grid structure so it's a 2d mesh connecting n cross n nodes here one node can communicate with four neighbors except the nodes on the periphery what is the bisection width of this network so i have n square uh, nodes here and how many links do i need to break to divide this into a partition if i break this link this link this link and this link right if i break this link i can divide this into uh, two halves so how many links have i broken four in this example when i had a four cross four mesh 16 nodes so i broke four links right so it is uh, n so bisection width is equal to n for a n cross n grid and if i look at the total number of nodes then it is the square root of the total nodes the square root of n square so bisection width is 
equal to square root of 16 in my given example. And this is a good enough number. In previous cases, we had a constant bisection width, whereas if it is uh, some order of n, then it is good. What is the diameter of this network? That is how many maximum uh, hops do I need to cover in the worst case? So, if our worst case is going from uh, one corner to the other corner. So, for this, I will have to go first in one direction. So, from 1, 2, 3 here and then 1, 2, 3 here. So, I have to go n minus 1 hops in one direction, n minus 1 hops in the other direction. Right? So, we did n minus 1 in this direction and then we did n minus 1 in the downward direction. So, total 2 into n minus 1 was the diameter. So, even this grows uh, square root of the total number of nodes. Okay? So, the cost is order number of nodes and the average latency is order square root the number of nodes. These chips are relatively easy to lay out because of their two dimensional structure. We have lot of path diversity. Well, you can definitely see that I have multiple ways of reaching from one source to another destination. So, we have lot of path diversity and a very popular uh, network topology implemented in the Tilera processor as well as several other on-chip network prototypes. So, this type of a mesh has uh, got a, a different naming convention also. So, pardon me for this mistake, this is 4 array because there are 4 uh, nodes and we have 2 dimensions. So, it is 4 array 2 mesh because we are using a 2 dimensional structure. We have x dimension and y dimension and every dimension has got 4 nodes. So, it is a 4 array 2 mesh. Same thing here, this is a 4 array 2 cube and that is the torus. So, what do we do here to optimize on uh, the latency? We can connect this one to this. Similarly, this one to this, right? So, we can connect every uh, node at the corners to the head node. So, two ends can be connected forming a torus network. So, once you form a torus network, what happens? Your bisection width doubles and your diameter halves, right? So, you have further improved the connectivity. Here, we are going to uh, put the wraparound links with the end nodes, okay? Now, the next data structure is the hypercube. Now, hypercubes uh, are the generic umbrella under which most of these uh, other topologies fall. So, if I just take one node, it, it is a node in itself and I want to connect two nodes. So, this is a one dimensional network, right? If I want to extend this to two dimensions, then I take the same network, this and I make a copy of that in a, another dimension and then I connect it. So, this becomes a two dimensional hypercube which is nothing but a mesh, right? It looks like a mesh. I want to go from here to a three dimension. What will we do? We will take a two dimensional network and make a copy of it and then connect everything. So, I will take a two dimensional network, another two dimensional network, and then I will connect them this. So, we have to connect the corresponding nodes, right? So, this way this is a 3D hypercube and then similarly you can have a four dimensional hypercube where you take two of these 3D hypercubes and connect the corresponding nodes. So, in this context uh, we need to understand the different uh, parameters which we were discussing that is the bisection width, the degree and so on. So, Overall, the hypercube is nothing but a k array n cube or a k array d cube depends on uh, the number of dimensions if I am using. So, just to solve the confusion, let me use this as a d cube because um, n I am using for number of nodes. So, k array d cube that is I have k number of nodes per dimension. Right, so, if I write k array d cube. So, this means I have k number of nodes per dimension. Per dimension I have k nodes and this is the number of dimensions. So, if I take a 3D hypercube, how many dimensions do I have? 
3, right? So I have 3 dimensions and in every dimension how many nodes do I have? 2. So I will call it a 2 array 3 cube, okay? So that's how a 4 dimensional cube can be constructed by taking copies of two three dimensional cubes. So those three dimensional cubes are in the brown and black color and the pink ones are showing the connection of the two 3D cubes with each other. Okay, so the uh, if you observe the corresponding nodes are getting connected with these links. Okay, so some more properties of this. So latency, what is the latency of transfer? Here if you uh, can quickly observe if I have um, uh, 8 nodes then I am going to take log n uh, 3 hops right from 1, 2 and 3. So that worst case I am going to take 3 hops to reach any other node. Hence uh, the latency is order log n. So order log n for any dimension right. So it does not depend on that. So number of nodes is n then you need order log n number of hops to reach from one node to the worst case destination. Hence we can say that uh, we have a good latency. What is the bisection width here? Even that is very high because it is uh, very tough to divide this into two parts. I have to remove several links to divide this network into two pieces. Hence I have a good bisection width. The switch degree however is a problem because it grows linearly with the number of dimensions. So if I add one more dimension, for example when we went from a 3 dimension to a 4 dimension, we ended up adding, uh, so we had these 3 links right with this node. When I added the 4th dimension, I had to add the pink line to connect to the uh, node in the other dimension. So it grows linearly with the number of dimensions, hence the switch degree is not constant whereas we desired it to be constant. So that is a small disadvantage of these hypercube type of networks. For example, if I am taking 256 node system, then I need a switch degree of 8 which is a huge number to design switches. Also the layout is harder here because you, if you can see drawing these diagrams on paper itself is difficult, imagine laying them out a, on a IC. So they are tough to lay out. However, uh, up to small number of nodes, they are still utilizable in some systems. They are using hypercubes and it is a good network topology. So in this example, what was the switch degree? When I had uh, 8 plus 8, 16 nodes added, then log of 16, that was 4 became the switch degree, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So switch degree increased, but the latency remained log n. So if you want to go from uh, this node to this node, so 1, so I go 1, 2, 3, so 3 worst case 4, right? So worst case I will need uh, 4 steps to reach from one node to the other side, okay? So some generic notations and then we will see a quick summary of the parameters. So ring, tori, hypercubes are normally called k array d cubes. So k means the number of nodes in each dimension, d cubes means d number of dimensions. So if I have a n cross n torus then it is n array 2 cube and for a d dimensional hypercube it is 2 array d cube. So here what was uh, if you want to call this how will you name this? We have how many dimensions? 3 dimensions. So 3 cube and there are 2 nodes so it is a 2 array 3 cube. So given those generic notations. Uh, this table is summarizing all the uh, different parameters which we have considered. So let us uh, see it slowly. So here I am listing the topology in the first column. Then the switch degree that is how many links are connected to every node. The network diameter that is the maximum path. The bisection width that is how many nodes, you, how many links you need to remove to divide the network into two almost equal parts. Average distance is found experimentally and the network size that is the total number of nodes we are considering. Okay, so first row is the 1D or a linear array. So linear array of course you can recollect it's just nodes connected to each other in a straight line and uh, uh, suppose I have n nodes. So linear array is nothing but like this, right? So these are n nodes and uh, if I want to divide this into two parts, I have to just uh, delete one link hence the bisection width is equal to 1. The network diameter that is the what is the longest path in the network it is n minus 2 for a 
uh, four node link I have one two and three hops to go so it is n minus two the switch degree is equal to two. If I convert this into a ring uh, I am going to connect the first node to the second node and this helps me uh, more because my connectivity remains and hence the bisection width becomes 2. The network diameter is uh, n by 2 it becomes half of what uh, it was earlier and the switch degree remains the same. A 2D mesh is an n cross n mesh I'm, so I am talking about n cross n connected nodes. The bisection width here is the square root of the total nodes that is square root of n cross n which is equal to n. Uh, you can quickly visualize it that I have suppose this is 3 cross 3 and to divide this into 2 parts what will you have to do right. So, if I want to cut this network into 2 almost equal parts I will have to cut it here. So, I am going to cut a uh, square root of 9 number of nodes ok. So, therefore, square root of 9 is the bisection width the network diameter you will have to go n minus 1 in one dimension and n minus 1 in the another dimension it is a 2D network. So, it is 2 into n minus 1. So, for a 2D mesh what is the switch degree? So, switch degree is how many nodes are is it connected to? So, that depends on the dimension it is so it is 2 power d. So, every node is maximally connected to 2 power d which is 2 power 2 that is 4 nodes. So, if you see in this example any node is maximally connected to 4 other nodes. Uh, except the peripheral nodes. In a 2D torus, 2D torus is nothing but the 2D mesh where we are connecting the nodes end to end with each other. Again it is an n cross n network. The bisection width becomes double now that we have uh, connections from the end points hence it becomes 2n. So, it is 2 times square root of uh, number of nodes. The network diameter you will reach quickly because you have more links hence it becomes half so it becomes n. So, bisection width doubles and the network diameter reduces by half the switch degree remains the same. In a k array d cube in a k array d cube you have k nodes in every dimension and you have d dimensions. So, therefore, I have k nodes in each dimension and we have d dimensions hence the total number of nodes n is equal to k power d. The network switch degree, so switch degree is every node is connected to how many other nodes. If you can recollect the hypercube diagram every node was connected to another node in the other dimension. So, it is equal to the number of dimensions that is d. So, in a k array d cube the switch degree is equal to the number of dimensions. Then the network diameter is how farthest a path you need to follow. So, in every dimension I would need to follow k minus 1 hops because it is a k array. k array means there are k nodes in one dimension to cover all of them I will need to go k minus 1 hops and I need to do such hops in every dimension. So, it is k minus 1 multiplied by d. So, d into k minus 1 is the network diameter. Okay. Bisection width is how many links I need to break to divide it into two pieces. So, if uh, you can imagine that I uh, for any d dimension network you can uh, imagine that I have this is one portion and this is another portion and it is connected by these links. So, I need to cut these vertical lines which I am drawing. So, how many such vertical lines exist? In a uh, Suppose I take an example of a hypercube, I have these three dimensions. So, I have three bit vector, right. So, each bit is representing one dimension. So, if I am going from here to another dimension, I am going from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 0, 0, right. So, when I move from here to here, I essentially am cutting the links for all the dimensions except the current one. So, overall if I have d dimensions then I am going to cut the links of d minus 1 dimensions. So, how many links am I going to cut and I have such uh, pairs that is I have k power uh, if I have k nodes then I have the, the pairs of links are k nodes in that and k nodes in this. So, I have k nodes here and k nodes here and those many links I am going to break and these links are d minus 1 because I am uh, dividing 
it into two pieces. I have d dimensions and one dimension will get deleted hence it is k to the power d minus 1 right. So, I am going to cut k links and continue cutting this for all the d minus 1 dimensions. So, that therefore the bisection width is k power d minus 1. Uh, direct example for k array d cube is a hypercube which is a 2 array d cube. Here uh, if we quickly follow the same formula the switch degree is d which is log n uh, because n is uh, 2 power d in this case. The network diameter is d which is uh, straightforward because in a you have to go d number of hops to reach from one node to any farthest node which is also equal to d into k minus 1. So, it is d into k minus 1 where k is equal to 2 this is 2 minus 1 right. So, that is why it is equal to d and the bisection width is 2 power d minus 1. So, that way the hypercube is done and all the uh, values in the average distance are empirically identified. So, these are the values for each of them ok. So, overall uh, that is the summary of the different topologies right. So, every topology exhibits different characteristics that is it has a different diameter, bisection width, the switch degree right. So, you saw in this that uh, each of them had a different one and you would want to use one topology for one type of a design and another and we cannot say that this is the best topology right because uh, each architecture will require a different type of a matrix on which it wants to depend. We normally say latency and bandwidth as the main matrix, but these uh, values which we come up with are for worst case designs or for communicating between farthest nodes. But in real scenarios you might not want to communicate across farthest nodes, hence uh, uh, these parameters are there, but you cannot rely completely on them. So, you have to do analysis before you can come up with a topology for your application or your design. Right. So, with this uh, we finish the topic on topologies. So, overall we are going to uh, look at a brief overview of the topic on interconnection networks. The topic in topology itself is a huge topic because you can mathematically derive the node numbering, the paths, the uh, other matrix which we are discussing and there is huge literature available for this. For the students who are interested they can look it up, but in the topic of interconnection networks we are generally going to take an overview of what all things exist so that we can uh, understand or build a big picture of where this parallel architecture is built upon. When I say scalable network, how does the scalable network look like right. So, we are not going to go in the details of the network design, but we are just understanding how the network is existing, uh, what are the different matrix of evaluation. So, we have looked at topology, then we will quickly look at how the routing algorithms work, uh, how is the flow control happening and so on ok. So, a brief overview of interconnect networks will happen in this module. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.